Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Uh, not a great night last night. So we had a bad Saturday, a good Sunday, and a bad Monday. So two of the last three days have been losing ones. Sucks. We're turning around tonight. Right now I'm talking game six. Bucks versus Suns in Milwaukee. Let's break it down. Welcome to The Source. The Source. The Source. Hey, get the Suez. All right, like I said, game six, Bucks, Suns. Uh, Suns facing elimination on the road here. Uh, line opened up, Bucks minus five, but a lot of early money and early bets came in on Phoenix and they dropped it and went from five down to four and a half as of 8 a.m. this morning. And yo, check it out. As we cruise through this morning, it looks like we do have some Milwaukee Bucks money rolling in. It's coming in slow, but it is coming in. As of 1 p.m., we're up to 37% of the money on the Bucks now, and the books reacted to this money right away. I mean, that was at four and a half, and as soon as that Bucks money started coming in, they bumped it back up to five. It seems like they raised the lineup a little prematurely. I mean, it was only a 5% shift, and that line went from four and a half back to five. Books may be favoring the Bucks a little here. All right, game six, let's talk about it. So the Suns have now lost three straight games for the first time since January. Yeah, this does not happen often. And it's crazy because Phoenix has actually been out shooting the Bucks as far as true field goal percentage goes. But the Bucks have offensive rebounds, turnovers, free throws, points in transition. Basically, the Suns are shooting better, but the Bucks are winning on all other fronts. All right, let's start with a positive for the Suns. In game five, they finally won the turnover battle. We're able to limit themselves to just nine turnovers in the game. Problem is, one of those nine lost them the game as we all saw Drew Holiday rip the ball from Devin Booker's hands, which sealed it. That is now two games in a row that Phoenix has lost by basically handing the game away with a turnover at the end of the fourth quarter. Drew Holiday, who I still hate, 27 points, 13 assists in game five, extremely impressive. Listen, if Drew Holiday is going to beat Chris Paul on both ends of the floor, on offense and on defense, then the series is over tonight. It wasn't just the stat line though for Drew Holiday, it was the timeliness of his offense. So if y'all remember, Suns were up 37-21 at the end of the first quarter. Giannis starts the second quarter on the bench. So if you're a Bucks fan or you bet Bucks money line like I did, Right now you're like, shit, we're down 16 and they just sat Giannis down. God, I hope Milwaukee can just keep it close, keep it to within 20. That way we can have a big second half and still have a shot of winning this game. Drew Holiday had 14 points and five assists in the second quarter alone. So check this out. Second quarter starts, Giannis is on the bench. They are down 16 with six minutes and 14 seconds left in the second quarter. Giannis comes back in the game. It's 49-46 and they're down three with fresh legs Giannis coming back on the floor. Drew Holiday did that, or at least orchestrated. I don't want to take credit away from everyone else, but he orchestrated that. I still hate you, Holiday, for game two. I'm not quick to forgive, but damn, that made up for it a little bit. That was a really impressive game, and I cashed. So game six, let's talk adjustments real quick, and I'm only going to mention one, and it's a huge one for the Suns. You got to be better in transition, Phoenix, especially on the defensive side. In this series, the Bucks are averaging 18.75 fast break points per game. And for those of you that don't follow NBA analytics like that, that's a lot. Plays like this, this is what you need to adjust Phoenix. Check this out. So Craig takes the shot, which isn't a bad shot. He's got a good look from three. Look at him try to run aimlessly in here to get this offensive rebound. I realize he almost gets it, but check this out. There are four bucks there with position. The chances of Craig grabbing that offensive rebound are slim. And what it does is it completely leaves Crowder out to try as the only defender back. Now it turns out Crowder didn't really do shit either. Uh, Bucks got an easy two points. And this is just one example of what's been happening this entire series. The Suns, as good as they are in every area of the game, they do not play transition defense at all sometimes. Now I like Monty Williams. I supported him all year. I'm not gonna bail on him and start bashing him now, but and wait, you know what? And I'm sure he's gone over this film with his guys. I'm sure he notices it. If I notice it, he notices it. Trust me, he's better than me. But I'm sure he's gone over with his guys. But this is game six, man. They've been doing this for five straight games. I mean, you would think he would have made this adjustment sooner. I don't know. If this series was played in just half court possessions, the Suns would have swept them already. Check these numbers out. So in half court possessions per 100 possessions, 
Bucks are averaging 96.9 points per 100 half court possessions. Suns 106.5. The Suns are dominating in the half court on both sides of the ball. The problem is those points in transition, man, and the offensive rebounds. So who am I betting? I'm rolling with Monty Williams to slow this game six down and turn it into more of a half court game. The Suns will win that game. If they limit the, the buckets in transition, slow the game down, the Suns will win, I promise. Question is, are they able to do that? I say yes today. Give me Suns plus five and give me the Suns money line, one unit on each. Uh, if anything changes, Twitter, Instagram story, and Facebook. VIP sheets going out, total and props for the NBA game and the full MLB ticket for tonight, including pick of the day, parlay of the day, round robin of the day. That will be going out 4.35 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you check your texts and phones for that. Let's bounce back after yesterday. Honestly, let's bounce back from this weekend. I know Sunday was good, but overall, not a great weekend. I hate that. We're getting some money back tonight. I promise I'll talk to you on Twitter.